What's up guys? Welcome back to Flipping Finance with Greggy B. Today we are going to be discussing how to invest $100. Shout out to my sister for asking me to do a video on this. I think it's a great question. So if you're looking to invest the money in stocks, because you can invest it anywhere, you know, stocks or cryptos or bonds, uh, maybe not bonds. If you're, if you're looking to invest in bonds, this is the channel for you. Sorry. If you're looking for stocks, cryptos, I would use Robinhood or Webull. I know these brokerages are newer and kind of the new kids on the block and they've come under some scrutiny especially robin hood uh and i i've had robin hood since 2015 and i've dealt with a few issues but overall i haven't transferred my funds out of it and that's where my the majority of my holdings are still there so they still have done enough to maintain my loyalty weeble is another broker that i have some money in and i We'll advocate for both of them. Um, they're legitimate brokers, just as Charles Schwab or Fidelity. Uh, I know they're newer and they don't have the decades of reputation, but you know, I still am trying to believe. I know the CEO of Robinhood, Vlad, he's coming off as maybe a tool to some people and we're trying to get a sense of if we like him or not, but I'm gonna try to get him the, give him the benefit of the doubt for as long as I can and to believe him when he says he's on the, the side of the little guy. Um, but I, I just like the platform. I just like Robinhood. So, ramble way too much about that but i'm going to link below Robinhood and link weeble if you sign up you can get two free stocks through weeble and one free stock through Robinhood, so you can take that hundred dollars and automatically turn it into 105 dollars or 120 dollars depending on the value of the stocks that you receive so once we have that and once we have our broker here's what we could do with the money <laughs> So if we're comfortable with a high level of risk, we could take that hundred dollars and we could put it in Doge. That's right, Doge or Doggy or Dodge. No, it's gotta be Doge. So if we pull up Doge, if we take a look at the one month chart of Dogecoin, which is this cryptocurrency, which doesn't have the same reach and doesn't have the same applications as Bitcoin and Ethereum, which have the two biggest market shares and those I have bigger positions in. Although now this, I think, is coming close to overtaking those because I put a small amount in, which has exponentially grown. But if you would have put $100 in Doge on January 27th when it was 0 0.007 cents or even 0 0.008 cents, and then were able to sell out of your position the $100 that you invested, when it reached to 8 cents, 0 0.08, that's a 10x return. Your 100 has become 1,000. Now we're looking to reinvest that into other things okay so that's an example of something rare okay this got caught up in the reddit situation and got pumped up but if you're able to get into something watch it spike and sell at the right time it doesn't even need to be the very top if you sold at four cents or five cents and it's still over four now so if you if you had that investment your your initial investment would still be 5x it just wouldn't be 10x anymore but you'd still be able to sell it for 500 if you didn't want to believe in dogecoin in long term and wanted to put in companies like apple and amazon and tesla or whichever companies you believe in and not have to worry about it as much because having all of your money in one asset is extremely volatile so that's just one example let's let's talk a little bit more about some other things we can do with a hundred dollars all right if putting all of the money into crypto is not for you i totally understand that's probably a good move let's talk about different ways we can use this hundred dollars First, let's go over a long-term approach of using the money and then we'll delve into more of a short-term approach. So if you wanna use this $100 to get it into a few different stocks or ETFs or long-term plays that you're going to hold for years and look decades from now, maybe use it into your retirement, I would suggest building your own little personal pie of maybe about 10 stocks within multiple sectors maybe throwing 10% of it into crypto. Uh, with the other 90, I would pick maybe nine individual stocks within different sectors, you know, pick some technology, pick some consumer discretionary, pick some consumer staples, pick some financials, you know, pick some renewable energies. You know, you can look at industrials, energy, real estate, materials, but I'd be leaning more towards the IT field. You know, look at FinTech, look at these, look at 3D printing, look at genomics, all, all the up and coming industries uh, and all the up and coming movements that I think, you know, have made already some sharp moves up, but it could be just the start for some futuristic developments. All right. So that's more of a set it and forget it approach where you're looking for individual stocks that you have conviction in that you've done some due diligence with. I like to look for strong brands that I believe in that I think are going to continue to make their imprint within our culture. 
Uh, so that's more of just a set it or forget it, kind of finding a few stocks that you don't want to do too much active work with. Another way we could look to invest that $100 would be to take more of an active approach. So we're still going to look for companies that have growth potential. We think our, the stock price is going to increase, but we're looking to only hold that maybe for as little as a day, but usually more so a week, a month, maybe two months. And we're going to look to do this from stock to stock all across all different industries and continue to move the money around so that when we make $5 or $10 and eventually $20, $50 off one of these stocks, you know, after we initially invested only 10 or 20, then we can continue to take those profits and to move them into other stocks that we also have conviction in. So the second more active approach to investing is obviously a lot more time consuming and more stressful and you have to be a lot more present with your choices and your assets. An active approach to investing means taking some profits off the table when your stock is up 5%, 10%, 20%, depending on how volatile and the size of the market cap, you know, when the move makes sense and when the move seems a bit too parabolic where you wanna shave some of that and have that cash as buying power where then you can move to stocks that are undervalued at the time that you think will then grow. And then once those do make their move, you can then take the capital, or excuse me, you can then take the profits from those stocks, sell some, shave some, get that into your buying power, and then always be moving, you know, keeping some investments where you never sell out of your position completely and you watch those grow over time, but you're also being responsible when your stocks do go up sharply, taking some off the table and putting that and putting it into stocks that maybe are having a down day or get oversold or are too low based on an overreaction, which you can take advantage of, watch the rise back up, then remove some of those shares and start the cycle all over again. So obviously that takes a lot more time and just a lot more of your attention. Obviously that takes a lot more attention, right? You need to be aware, you do need to do some research, you need to know about the companies, you need to just know some basic framework, some technical analysis doesn't hurt. You know, reading the charts here a little bit doesn't hurt. I mean, reading this chart would be a little tough. This one's parabolic, but uh, you know, some charts, if we go to Apple, you know, kind of works within these moving averages and these lines and kind of follows some general guidelines. Of course, not always technical analysis is not the end all be all and does not always work, but this more active form of investing, this is why I wanna to try to grow this channel. This is why I'm trying to build a community and I would love some comments, love some questions. I'm still learning myself and it's really fun to be out here and in the market and it's fun to make money obviously and it sucks to lose money, but you know, at this point we've had so many ups and downs, my skin is getting thicker and thicker and I'm learning ways to decrease my exposure to the volatility and to try to have more consistent uptrend you know, making safer decisions. That's a little bit about how I would invest $100 or more, just set it and forget it approach. If you're like, you know, if you see some companies that are super undervalued, put it in there, check back in a year, two years, five years, or take the second approach where you look to see which of your stocks are performing well, sell some or all of those positions, put it in stocks that you still think are good, but not performing as well, because the timing of the market is obviously the trickiest part. But one of the easier aspects is finding companies that are profitable, that are strong brands and they're underappreciated and undervalued by the market because their time will come. So I know I went on a little bit about all that, but like, comment, subscribe, share, all that stuff. Thank you guys. I appreciate the love and I'll see you guys in the next one. Greggy B out. Peace.